Subscribe to Film Companion for your film fix. Hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. What people don't know is we overshot and I was meant to be shooting a song for Karan Johar for Kabhi Alvid and Akena, which was a song called Rock and Roll Sonye. And we had to shoot that later because my father was unwell at the end of 2005 and hospitalized when we were meant to shoot the song. And now he was okay to shoot, but I was shooting Guru. I was 20 kilos heavier and I didn't have a beard. For me, my greatest award was my father's reaction after the, the, the screening of Guru. And um, I will never, ever need any other award after his reaction. Um, it was a very emotional moment between a father and a son. He was obviously very, very emotional. And he just gave me the tightest hug. And I'll never forget what he said to me. Abhishek, so lovely to have you on my movie Milestone. Thank you for making the time. No, thank you for having me. I'm honored. Thank you. First uh, of all, I hope you are well and everyone at home is well and hail and happy. Good. good. We're all good. Uh, you know, I'm excited to talk to you about a film that's one of my favorites from your filmography, Mani Ratnam's Guru. You know, I rewatched it before this conversation and there's just so much in it that's, um, you know, so moving and so powerful and so inspiring. And, and I want to get a sense of what it was like for you to be this character, what the shoot was like and lots more. So let me begin with just asking you, you know, this film released in 2007. 2006, you've got uh, Kabhi Alvida Nakena, you've got uh, Dhoom 2, 2005, you've got Black Master. Very different space from what this film is asking you to do. I mean, it's, it crosses a span of 50 to 60 years. We see you first as a strapping young man, then going into a much older man, gray hair, paunch, glasses. What was your first instinct when Maniratam offered you the role? Were you afraid? Wow. <clears throat> you know, um, so yeah, film trivia. We were never meant to make Guru. What were you supposed we were, to make? We, um, we made Yuva, which released in uh, the first half of 2004. And I remember it was 2000 and... Yeah, again, about a year after the release of Yuva, Mani sent me a message. And um, Mani's always called me and addressed me by my character's names. So he wrote me a message saying, Lalan, are you ready to do one more? To which I gave as cool an answer as I could, although I was jumping with joy. Yes. Um, and there was a script that he was very keen to make called Packy. And um, it dealt with... Um, it was again a journey of, it wasn't a biopic, but it was a story of a boy um, whose parents have immigrated to, to England in the late 60s, early 70s, and grows up um, in, middle, in the Midlands of Great Britain, uh, faces a whole load of um, racism over there, how he deals with that, and becomes an antisocial element, um, and then starts, and then grows into whatever he is. Um, that was the script we were doing. And uh, we were getting prepped for that. And um, in early 2006, um, I, had, I was shooting Umrao Jan, I think, at that point of time. I think this was in the month of January or February. I was in the, in the throes of shooting Umrao Jan. And... Um, I got a message from him saying, I want to come meet you. So I said, yeah, I'll just call you. He was like, no, no, I want to come meet you. And that's when I panicked because uh, I thought he was going to say, I don't want to make this film with you and I want to do something else. And obviously um, the thought of losing a film with money was, was heartbreaking to me because I'd, I'd fought such a beautiful bond with him um, that I was uh, very scared. So he came over to my office and um, he said, I don't want to make this film. And I asked him why. And he said, I just, I'm not able to do anything in the second half. Um, the, the, the screenplay isn't really going anywhere. Um, apart from a basic 
plot line, I'm not able to flesh it out even more. Um, and plus, also he was feeling that it was kind of becoming London Singh goes to London kind of a zone. He said, we're not doing anything different. We're not doing anything new. So I very reluctantly said, okay, you know, I mean, I'll, I can't force you. I'll respect what you have to say. And I started adjusting myself to get up to give him a hug and say, you know, well, thank you for giving me the opportunity any which way. And he said, okay. And he got up and um, we had decided to meet for dinner at Shad's house that night. Shad obviously, you know, treats money like a father and, and uh, has assisted money ever since. And so we always meet at Shad's house. And I said, okay, so I'll see you tonight for dinner. He said, yeah, okay. And at the door, he turned around and he said, oh, yeah, but there's something else I want to make. Will you do that? And I was like, is that a question or let's just get on with it? Okay, yeah. Abhishek, you're 31 years old. How did you get into the headspace of this man? What was, what was Money's brief to you? Money gives a brief? <laughs> Does he not? <laughs> make, it, make it real. Make it real. Make it real. That's what money says to you. Make it real. The only thing I, you know, compared to, to, to Yuva, which we had done just before that, in which we had done some severe prep, I think we didn't have time. So we kind of just jumped into Guru both feet first in the deep end. And um, yeah, I don't remember us doing that kind of prep with each other. I mean, I obviously did whatever I had to do on my end and talked to him about how I saw it. And he would discuss what he envisaged for the thing. But I think, by and large, money has a, a wireframe always ready for his characters. And he likes to color it in on set. Um, there's severe thought that goes into it from his side. But you also realize as an actor that there's so much more that he's I wouldn't say improvising, but he just kind of feeds off the energy of what his actors are doing and then thinks of tweaking it a bit here and there. Um, but the basic brief was, you know, let's not try. It, we didn't want to be heroic with him. Uh, we wanted to almost, in a sense, highlight his flaws if he had any. And the kind of thing was that he's going to roll with the punches. And if he has a flaw, he's going to turn it into... Um, you know, something that really works for him. The one thing we were both very sure of with, that we had discussed is I, I always saw Guru as very energetic. And I actually said that the older he gets, he must compensate for his old age by trying to walk even more energetically. Um, he's very ambitious. You, he's always sticking, you know. Um, there, there was one scene which thankfully never made it to the end edit, which actually just had him sitting and just ruminating or pondering. You don't really see many shots like that in Guru. He's always on the move. He's always moving. He's got something up. He's up to something. Even if there's a curveball thrown at him, he'll learn how to turn around and throw it back at him. And there were many things that we based him on. I mean, people never believe me, but I actually, uh, I actually based my portrayal on, on somebody that I know. Who? Vashu Bhagnani. No. Yeah. In what way? I, um, do you know Vashuji well? Not well, no. But of course, so I've I, I, I know Vashuji very well. You know, I've, I've, I've done, I did my second film with him. Um, and uh, I went on to do Omja Jagdish with him. He's a very, very dear, dear friend of mine. And what I remember is we were shooting on an outdoor for Tera Jadu Chaliya. And Vashuji um, sadly got conjunctivitis. So he was quarantined in his room. And I had to go see him one day. And he was in really bad shape. And he had a fever and a cold and conjunctivitis. And I met him and he sprung out of bed. And he said, sir, ready, sir, let's go. Let's have a picture. And I was like, ah. wow. And that I thought of and I told Mani this. He said, yeah, sure, let's do that. Vashuji, I've never seen Vashuji in high speed. Vashuji is a ball of energy. Hit, flop, problem, no problem, jubilance, whatever. He is just this positive ball of energy. And I said, we have to use this quality. And this is, you know, what I want. Even the way he walks, the way he dances, the way he runs. So I tried to, so, so the, the person I wanted to base Guru on was physically and the way he reacts to every situation was, was Vashuji. But Abhishek, 
you know, the film is loosely based on the life of Dhirubhai Ambani. Did you go there at all? Did you study him in any way? No, because we never thought of it in that way. Um, really? Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, Mani was very clear that this is, this is a character who's come from nowhere and wants to achieve the world and doesn't want to be apologetic about it. So he didn't want to base it on anybody. If there were so many inspirations for us. Um, there were so many people that um, inspired the storytelling of it, the scenes of it. Um, so we never really went and actually tried to physically base him on anybody. Like I said, I mean, for me, I used to, the characteristics I wanted to base on, on what I'd witnessed uh, with Mr. Vashu Bhakta. You know, this was also one of the first few films where we saw an actor sort of undergo a physical transformation. It, it wasn't so mm. common back then. Um, yeah, not at all, no. You know, what, what was that like for you? You know, you're in the prime of your leading man moment and, and then you have to put on all that weight. How did you sort of deal with that? I put on 20 kilos. Wow. Uh, I put on 20 kilos. Um, and money wanted it done progressively because he was going to shoot the film chronologically. Hence, we started in, um, in Turkey, which is the first time you see the adult Guru Kante side. And then we came back and then his village portions once he comes back from Istanbul and then when he moves to Mumbai to Paidhuni and, and carries on. And uh, in typical money fashion, when we were shooting in Badami, suddenly one night he came into my room. We were all staying in this one, uh, like a guest house slash lodge. And we used to all eat dinner in our corridor, which was like a balcony. And uh, he came up, he said, oh, uh, you know, AR has just sent me a great track and I want to shoot it tomorrow. I said, okay, what is this track? He said, no, 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 you know, this is, uh, in the film, that when you have the children and you come back home and there's a celebration song. I said, yeah, but we have, Ashwari and I have kids like 15 years hence of what we're shooting. Yeah, yeah, but we'll do it, we'll do it, we'll do it. I said, but 15 years hence, I'm meant to be 15 kilos heavier. Uh, you figure something out. I said, can I hear the song? And in typical, Rehman had sent a click track with Bapida's voice. So I was like, how are we going to do this? And I remember Amira Punwani, who was the costume um, designer, and Ashwarya actually took kambals from the lodge and made a fat suit for me with razais. And then they put a zip on it. And I actually remember them, you know, sitting there and stitching this. And the next day, and I'll tell you, we're early May in Badami. Oh. And we're doing the song to a click track with just Bapida's voice. And I'm like, what is going on? And Mani said, no, no, uh, you have to cut your hair. I said, Mani, how can I give myself a receding hairline when, you know, we're still shooting. And he was insisting on it. I remember we actually convinced Manoj Joshi, who was playing my friend, who comes back to shave his head. And we give him a ball patch. And he was very upset. And we were doing that. And I said, look, this Mani, he's done it now. I'll just... And we took some gray mascara and I just put some gray mascara, put my hair back because it was so hot. And I was wearing this suit and I, I still have this photograph of, of Rajiv Menon and Ashwarya. I've taken this photograph. Rajiv took this photograph of Ashwarya standing in front of the camera with a thermometer, with the light meter, which has the, the, the temperature. It says 60 degrees Celsius. Oh. Because Rajiv's problem was we're shooting the Badami Caves. So there's all stone around you. And because it was peak summer and the sun was so harsh and because they wanted a certain shadow or lack thereof, because we're shooting in and around the caves, they had to shoot at like top sun. So the sun is at its harshest. So in order to see the, the actors in the foreground and the background not to burn out, he was using Dino lights to put that. Dino lights, if you are stood in front of, you can't. I mean, they're, they're scathing. And they were, you know, I think, uh, 16 kV HMIs and 60 degrees. I remember. I remember there were shots where, where some of the dancers, Juti's soles were, oh my were, were peeling off. And I was there with this fat suit on. And I'm like, you know, this could have been an option, but I definitely have to put on this weight because I'm not wearing this suit. And then we started, and then we got back, finished the rest of the younger portions. And then obviously, uh, we had about a two week gap where I started eating. And it was fun. Uh, I regretted it later because I felt I should have done it a bit more scientifically. I was like, okay, you know, eat as much sweet as you want and just put on the weight. But we managed to put on 20 kilos. Losing it was uh, a lot more difficult, but that's how it went. Yeah. 
You know, one of my favorite scenes in the film, Abhishek, is when you and um, Aishwarya are standing in front of the mirror and she's pregnant and you're comparing paunches, okay? It was never there. It was never in the script. What do you mean? It was never in the script. Improvised on the, on the set? Money said, yeah, Guru, now you've put on all this way, we should show it. I'm like, yeah. So he said, yeah, okay, we'll do this scene. You come out of the shower to your stomach and then he cut it beautifully to the AGM. Um, so he never intended to shoot that scene. He just said, no, I, I, came, I came to set, we were shooting in my house, which is very close to the hotel where Ashwari and I were staying in Chennai. And um, he said, yeah, 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 you put on weight now, let's show it. I said, okay. So I just put a towel around my, um, my neck and came out and that's how we shot that scene. It was just decided on the spot. But it's just so lovely. It, and, and it, it's a beautiful scene. It's a beautiful scene. And when yeah. she says that you have the, 20, the thousands of shareholders in your stomach, you know. Yeah. Abhishek, did you ever have a sort of moment of vanity that I'm standing in front of the mirror with this sponge? No. You know, I've thought about that a lot after the film released and whenever I see it. But for me at that point in time, the vanity is about being the character. I'm an actor. My job is to look the part. And I was very, very excited about it. And, you know, I was asked during the promotions and post that, that oh, weren't you concerned? Like you just said, you know, you're 31. You're, you're you know, you're, you're playing the leading man, etc. Et I never thought about it. Because for me, it was like, it's a Mani Ratnam film. I mean, what's your problem? To add to it, it's a great character. Who gets the opportunity at the young age of 30, 31? I mean, I was, yeah, I was 30 when I was shooting it. To do something like this, to play a character from the age of 20 to like 75, 80, you don't get that. I mean, you're so lucky. So just go for it, you know? So these thoughts never, I mean, I would think it would be unnatural for anybody to have doubted doing what I did. I never, it never crossed my mind. And when he said, let's show it, I was like, yeah, okay. Because vanity would have been, oh, let's show your six pack. Right. But I have nothing to fear. I mean, yeah, he's got a paunch. He's a businessman. He, we've shown him as somebody who's putting on weight with the excesses of life and lifestyle. Go for it. So I never even thought about it. You know, um, another favorite moment which you did really, really amazing job was, was the, the hospital scene with Gansham when you go to see him when he's tried to kill himself and you sit and, and cry. Um, yeah. you, you tell him that you can't, you yeah. can't do it without yeah. him. I mean, just so wonderful. H how did you evoke those emotions? Do you have any memories of that? Yes. Oh God, I can't believe it. I hate that scene. Why? You did I, comple well. I completely faked it. What do you mean? And I remember, because first of all, I thought, I think Manoj Joshi is, is one of the best actors we have. He's so versatile. He's so wonderful. And I mean, I've known him for a very long time and he's so loving. And he, and Mani shot his shot first and he just did such a great job. And then it came to my turn. And after I say, Ki, you know, I can't remember the dialogue exactly. And then he says, oh, Jumpa ka dance. <laughs> and I, and I chuckle in the middle of this. I said, that, that. You know, and he's still, and, I, and Mani said that time, break down. And I just wasn't breaking down. I couldn't get that tear to fall. And then I piled in the glycerin. And even then I just felt, okay, you know what? I'm just going to try and act the hell out of this scene. But I never, I went away with that scene saying, I could have done much better. Really? That, that, that chuckle I felt never came naturally to me. Of that chat, and, you know, he says, hey, we bought kaam karna baki hai. You know, and uh, yeah, I, I was never happy with my performance in that scene. We, we can't see any of that. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> you know, okay, the, the, the one last scene I want to talk about is, of course, the great climax speech. Um, you know, where, where he's so rousing and inspiring. And, and at the end of that government inquiry, one of the people on that commission says, Ki ye genius hai ya thug. but we are all on his side. We are all with Guru. Um, Tell me how hard was that to do? Because that whole scene is just you and what you're doing in that frame. It's a long answer. Okay. Okay. Um, I think till money gave me Ravan, 
that was the toughest thing I'd ever done. Um, because money is brilliant, like I said, of of throwing a curveball at you at the last minute. And um, we had decided that the courtroom is going to happen, and we had shot all the scenes till the last day of the courtroom sequence when Guru is going to speak. And there was an instance that I had recollected with with money about something, a story my mother had told me about 1982 when my father had the accident of Cooley and a gentleman who used to come outside breach candy every day and just give her a flower, not say anything else and just leave. And this happened for the duration of the time that my mother used to go visit my father every day in the hospital. And on the day my father was being discharged, when she reached the hospital, she heard a bit of a scuffle between that same man and some security people. She didn't know who this guy was, but he used to just come and give a flower every day and go. And she went and stopped and said, no, no, you know, please don't uh, you know, rough him up or anything. What's going on? And obviously the man was very incensed at that point of time. And he says, tell these people not to touch me. And uh, he revealed that Bachan ki jo picture hai, uska black karta और उनकी वजह से मेरी तीनों बेटियों की शादी कर दी है मैंने। I owe my life to this man. Don't touch me. I'm just here to give her a rose. I don't want to do anything else. And I was telling him the story that you know I'd heard from my mom. And he said, "Let's use this." I said, "Okay." So that's why that scene when he's running up the stairs almost, and this one guy comes. And he's a man, I'm a taxi guy, and because of Shakti shares, I've married off all my daughters. Yeah. And that was like okay. Now I'm focused. Now I know why I'm doing this. I'm going to protect, fight for myself. I'm going to fight for the people that come up with me. And that's when, if you see, once he, he's looking down and walking up the stairs. After that, he looks up and he starts walking up the stairs saying, okay, I'm going to take these guys on head on. But then he goes to the courtroom and he sits down and he's quiet. And he doesn't say anything. And then, for me, which is the moment of the film, is when he asks Sudju to speak for her. And uh, Mr. Roshan Seth says, well, who are you? And she says, I'm 50% partner. Yes. Sir, I'm the owner of Shakti. The company's first promoter and 50% shareholder in the holding company. Mein. And that, that, I collapsed when she did that, that yeah. scene. Cause, and Victor had written it. And when she did it, I remember we all clapped because it was such an amazing moment of empowerment. Yes. Equality. Yes, but it was just badass, you know. <laughs> She's like, don't mess with me, dude. I'm 50% partner of this guy. I've had to put up with him all my life. Yeah. You know, I just loved it. And I said, how do you top this? This was the moment. How do you top this? So when it came to my section, I was like, okay, we're going to fail in comparison. And that's when money comes and says, I have an idea. I said, okay. He said, let's shoot the sequence in 48 frames. I was like, okay. He said, no, 48 frames. I said, okay. And I mean, for, for some of your viewers who might not know, 48 frames is what we call high speed, which is slow motion. A normal frame rate is 24 frames a second. If you shoot at 48 frames a second, everything seems at half pace. Now we've done songs at 48 frames. That's when it dawned on me what he actually wanted. Because when you do a song in 48 frames, the music is played at double speed. Oh. So instead of la da 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 da, it plays la da 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 da, and you have to lip sync even faster. And then when you play back at twenty four frames, it comes like it's in slow motion. And I was like, oh, so how do we do this? So first of all, he rewrote a bit of the scene. He wasn't happy, and Victor and Money and I were writing, and then he, we were cracking our brains. He said, look, around two o'clock in the afternoon, he said, you know what? Let's pack up. Let me figure this out. We'll come back tomorrow and do it. I said, okay. In the evening, he called me. He said, come to Sridhar's studio. The great uh, sound um, engineer, uh, Sridhar, who was a very close friend of money. We, we sadly lost him during the shooting of, of Ravan Was Alive. We went to his studio and they had devised that I'm going to dub this dialogue. So it was about a, I think, seven to ten page scene. So I said, money, I need time to rehearse it. He's like, no, no, you just read it. I said, no, but I need to perform it, right? 
He said, we'll record you, so we'll dub the scene. Tomorrow, we'll play it back like we do our songs in 48 frames. So you, yeah. So in theory, I'm like, yeah, okay. So we spent a large portion of the night getting it right. We managed to do it. Next day, Sridhar came on set. We're all ready. And um, we were about to start. And I wasn't able to start on time. My cue would always go wrong. So what they were doing is playing back my dialogue, which had been recorded the night before. And you're singing, at double, you're lip -sync. At, at double speed, and I had to right. lip sync. Right. Now, the thing which we had forgotten was, when you're doing that in a song, you're doing it to a meter. Music is, is on a meter. The spoken word doesn't have a meter because we weren't going to do it theatrically. It was this guy speaking. And when you speak, you take a pause when you want to. You take a breath when you want to and, you know, stuff like that. So there's no meter. So you literally have to go by muscle memory because there's no guide track. So what I said, no, no, we need a click track. So Sridhar at that point in time put a click track. So he gave me four clicks before the dialogue was to start. And then he tried to give me a click track throughout. But that's when we realized that this dialogue doesn't have a meter. So there's no point. So they only kept the four clicks. So you had tuck, 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 tuck. And he starts his dialogue. So I got that as a start. But then after that, it was just a matter of remembering how you'd said it and trying to do it in double the speed. Torture. So we did that. Then Money said, oh, I have another great idea. I said, what? He said, let's ramp the shot. I said, what? So now he decided to do it at, I think, 12 frames a second because he wanted that jittery feel. Right. Eventually, after this ordeal, we shot the scene in 24 frames a second, a normal take. Then we shot it in 48 frames. Then we shot it in 12 frames. Then they ran from 12 to 24. And then they went from 24 to 48 and 48 to 24. And then I think just for good measure, because Rajiv was really having fun, they changed the shutter angle to some 180 degrees or 90 degrees and six frames and to get some in-between shots. But they made me perform it any which way. And by the end of this, I was, a, I was just a mess. I didn't know what was going on. And it was all done in a day. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we finished at night and I just, I, I, I just passed out. I didn't know what was going on. And I was like, what has this guy just done to me? And he came and his traditional, came, he gives me a pat on my back and he said, okay, now go back. And I said, okay. And another trivia which people didn't know, if you see in that scene, he's got stubble. Right. And everybody said, yeah, you know, he's been in hospital, he can't shave or whatever, but what people don't know is we actually done part of that Jage and there's a song. There's a sequence with the, with the kids are shaving me. So where's the stubble come from? What people don't know is we overshot and I was meant to be shooting a song for Karan Johar for Kabi Alvid and Akena, which was a song called Rock and Roll Sonye. And we had to shoot that later because my father was unwell at the end of 2005 and hospitalized when we were meant to shoot the song. And now he was okay to shoot, but I was shooting Guru. I was 20 kilos heavier and I didn't have a beard which was my look in, um, so I, my hair was short at that point in time. So I started working out and the justification I gave money was, no, no, he's been sick. He's had a stroke. So he's going to lose weight again. Okay. Money wasn't convinced, but he's like, yeah, okay. And I said, money, you know, maybe you should have a, a bit of stubble to show that he's not, you know, kind of let loose. So money's like, if he's let loose, why is he losing weight? He should be putting on weight. I'm like, no, no, look nice. In my head, I'm like, I have to get into continuity because the next day I have to go to Yashra Studios to shoot Rock and Roll Sonia with Karan and, and dad. And that's what happened. The scene got over. I passed out at night, woke up in the morning, took a flight, reported straight to Yashrat Studios where we're doing rock and roll. So, yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. And it's, yeah. And, you know, then you realize that that's Mani Ratnam's genius as well. You know, things also just conspire to happen. I mean, yeah. who would have thought that, you know, so many months later, a song that we had loved during the making of the, the movie, which was Tere Bina, which was called Must Must at that point of time. And Rehman didn't want it because he said, you know, this word must has come too many times. It's done. So he made another version called Air Herete Ashki, which is also there in the movie. Yeah. And that was there. And I remember I, Eshwari and I used to be on Money's case. No, no, you have to keep that dum dara dum dara must, must. It's beautiful. You have to get it. And finally, he relented. He said, you know what? Let's shoot it. I'm like, okay, but... I'm shooting Joom Barabar Joom with a beard and a mooch and long hair. He said, no, no, we'll work it out. You just come. So a lot of that, you know, 
a lot of money's films are also functioning chaos which once yeah. you see the film you don't believe actually panned out like that but i think that's his blessing or his genius i don't know abhishek i also want to ask you about aishwarya who was just lovely um, oh yeah such a wonderful performance and and you know there's such an ease between the two of you the scenes yes of course the scene in front of the mirror but also the scenes in in the in bed when you're sort of pushing each yeah. other and then on that swing when she's pushing you and you're not yes. responding because you've had a stroke um, and i wanted to ask you did this this sort of ease between two actors does it come because you were already in a relationship or does it come because of the script how do you achieve this well the cool thing to say would be we're really good actors <laughs> but i have to admit um i actually realized this um in a scene earlier in the film which is again on the on the swing it's the first time when he buys her a swing and he's in the marketplace he grabs her he runs her up and she thinks she's he's bought her some jewelry and he's bought her a swing and she's like we put a swing in the middle of the hall and they sit on it and they start dreaming about what their future is going to be and it was a beautiful shot because i remember they rigged up the camera to the swing and he's just resting on a shoulder and he's saying we have so many cars and you'll be wearing this now lakha hat or tum moti ho gayi ho and this and, and they're just dreaming yeah yeah and we just and that was the first time i remember i had my chin on her shoulder and we and we're doing the scene and i felt so comfortable and i generally in romantic scenes i'm not comfortable at all i get very awkward and today i realized that maybe that comfort was because she allowed me that first as a co-actor but secondly also because i think we were in a relationship at that point of time also the scene was kind of talking about a future so somewhere i'm sure vicarious if you like what if this is actually our life you know one year two years down the line i mean there was no talk of marriage at that point of time uh but i think i i think in guru the chemistry was largely because apart from having done a lot of work together we're also good friends and from the first time we worked together i think we've been friendly there's an amazing amount of trust between the two of us as as actors and there's always been guru is is one of her, her greatest performances yeah she's really lovely firstly because it's not an author back role but you actually i mean if you go to see um she only had one proper scene in that film which was that that one moment that he brings up for her but you never think of that because her presence is so felt throughout the film and even if that's written in saying you know guru always looks to her for approval guru is not the story of a rags to riches of a businessman it's actually a beautiful love story um if you see the wonderful things that are there which she didn't really i mean vanity didn't come in the way of she's actually playing a character that's older than me uh she's playing a character that is married because he needed the money i mean look at the way she looks i mean anybody would you know want to jump jump at that opportunity but guru marries her for the dahej at that point of time so there's nothing that is propping her up in that sense um i mean even to the extent that money made her wear contact lenses and you know he kind of covered her famed beautiful eyes uh she's you know playing a middle class housewife she's somebody who's very happy being guru's support system um i mean there was a wonderful track where she actually takes him on and they fight and they don't talk for years yes um, which got, yes which got cut out there was a, a, almost a 40 minute section which got cut out and wonderfully edited back by nani sir into the film and um in in um in the end of the song tere bina there's a shot where she's in a house and she's drying clothes and he drives in in a mercedes and he comes out and she just runs down and hugs him and there's a round trolley and she says don't ever fight with me and he says if you're with me i'll take on the world and you cut to the bhumi puja of the first of shakti parivar's first factory money is going to kill me but that scene is shot after they've had this fight and they haven't spoken in months and she's left him and she's gone she's gone back to her village and he's in bombay and he becomes rich because when they separate there's a beautiful shot before tere bina the song starts where the tram comes in between the two yeah, of them yeah and they're still living in paidoni and he comes in a mercedes car time lapse he's made money he's wearing a proper suit right hair is a bit more coiffed and she comes and hugs him and she says i knew you'd come back and he says i haven't come for you he says i've come for your father she says what are you talking about she says tomorrow i've got 
I'm starting my factory. And there's a puja. So I've come to tell your father to come to the puja. And if you want to come, you can also come. And the next day, he's at the puja. And the father-in-law shows up. And he just looks at her and he says, she's not going to come. And he just waits. Manoj Joshi comes back from Istanbul. And he says, Mota bhai. He says, how could I not be here for this? And he says, they say, well, come on, get on with it. Like five more minutes. And that's when you realize that he's actually longing for her because he doesn't want to do anything without her. Because right. he can't do anything without her. Not only emotionally, he feels that she is my everything. And eventually the, the, the pundit says, I think we should get on with it. And he just looks down and her hand comes with the brick and holds his hand and puts the brick down. Puts the brick down. He looks at her. She, he smiles. She turns around and she walks right off. Saying, not that easily. And then there's that beautiful shot where he opens the map and he looks at his property and it starts raining and he puts it underneath. Right. So they actually fight. And then the factory gets built. And there's, there's a sequence where money actually, which I tell him it's this 2001 Space Odyssey, Odyssey's edit moment, where he shows the growth of Guru Kant Desai from a fledgling entrepreneur into this huge corporate tycoon in the series of three photographs where you see a chief minister come, the factory is ready and he puts it on and they all take a photograph and it's about 20 people. And then you come and there's 100 people and take a photograph and then there are thousands. Yeah. Those 40 minutes that were in that got cut into three shots. So what happens is he puts, the chief minister puts the power on and there's a short circuit. And the entire factory goes up in flames. And he's putting it out himself and he's lamenting after he said, and he's saying, this is my dream. And he's telling his brother-in-law, he says, this is my dream. I mean, his elder brother. He says, this is my dream. It's, I've lost my dream. And he says, Guru, go home. Go back to Suju. Now, he's not spoken to Suju after the Bhumi Puja because she's walked off. Oh. She said, no, no, no. He said, just go home. And this is, I mean, obviously recently into the thing. And that's when you realize that he goes home and everything's very quiet. And he's, I mean, all his money, he's lost everything. And he goes into the room and she's lying on the bed. And he senses that there's something wrong. And he says, what happened? And she says, I lost my child. And he says, what do you mean? And she said, uh, we looked a lot like you. You come to know she's lost her kid. She was pregnant with their first child. And they've lost a child. And here he is lamenting about his factory when actually his wife was having a miscarriage. And that's when that dialogue comes. And he says, I'm so sorry. I cannot do this without you. And all of this happened because you weren't there with me at the puja to put it on. And I cannot survive without you. I'm sorry. I just, we have to be together. And he just puts his head on her head and she's sobbing and he's sobbing. And she says, you know what? We'll try again. And he says, yeah, we'll try every day. <laughs> that was again, typical money, you know, the rose striker in you. And she smiles and he says, if you're with me, I'll take on the world. Just you be with me. I can take on anybody. And that's what that dialogue was. And then how they start building that, their, their why, why career was together. Why was it taken out? It was just cut out. And that's when he, re and if you see now in the Tere Bin at the end, when they come and hug, he's got short hair. But when that round trolley happens, you'll see me with long hair. Because that was shot in Madurai after the Tere Bina shoot with my long hair. And you can see I'm much thinner at that point of time. <laughs> so, so that's, and he cut out all uh, this whole thing, cut out. And later on, there was another fight. So what he established is that this man can't do anything without her. Right. Secondly, he doesn't want to do anything without her. Because for him, at least in my head, we never say it, but for him, it's all for her. It comes across like Guru's doing it for himself, but actually he's doing it all for Suchu because he's obsessed with her. Yeah. He just loves her so much. And that is why when you see, when she says the 50% partner dialogue, he's just looking on like, ah, yeah, that's my girl. <gasps> you know, there's such pride on his face. And that's when he can say, I will do everything So, so for me, Guru was not the story of this man. For me, Guru was this amazing love story. And a love story is going to be completely incomplete if your love is not, you know, going to be able, is not going to be socking those balls out of the park. Yeah. And I just felt Aishwarya was splendid. Unbelievable. I mean, to do, to be in a film where you, 
hardly have anything to do and still shine is the, is is true talent tell me um how does money extract these performances from you you know yuva ravan guru what does he do that you know makes you so good in his films he literally beats me up i mean not 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 physically but he'll he'll push you push you push you push you no no one more no try it like this like this like and he pushes you until you get a very instinctive reaction to what he what he's asking you to do you know where there's no more structure to your performance you just blurt it out and that's what he's looking for and he grabs that and once he grabs that he says that's it got it now let's try it this way and you're like what that's the complete opposite of what you've been pushing me for but he pushes his actors in ways which just make it very believable money is not one for melodrama or theatrics if you see and i've tried to observe this in money even from his initial films there's something very realistic about his performances yeah the circumstance might be unbelievable but because the performance is so realistic it's that much more relatable and i with me what i realize is he just pushes you pushes you pushes you pushes you until you just give up and you're like here just take this is all i've got left and that's what he wants because that's the most honest of performances at that point of time that's amazing <laughs> you know um he's amazing yeah. yeah he is amazing your father amit ji posted on twitter sat with abhishek and caught guru on dd and still filled with pride on his performance the film and its making theory at n not a single award came his way for guru i console him by saying not a single award came my way for divar yeah i remember when he said that rem- you know what did we have a conversation yeah i mean he's right i mean i i didn't win even like a lions club award for, <laughs> for guru <laughs> but i've never really thought about it because for me my greatest award was my father's reaction after the 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 screening of guru and um i will never ever need any other award after his reaction um it was a very emotional moment between a father and a son he was obviously very very emotional and he just gave me the tightest hug and i'll never forget what he said to me uh quietly in my ear and then um tried to wipe his tears and just left the screening and obviously the entire cast and crew panicked because mr amitabh bachchan came out hugged his son and just walked out um it's only later when we all went home and he had already reached home that money realized that he had, he was just so moved um and he didn't want to share that with anybody else but uh, that is my greatest uh reward to 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 gain my father's appreciation and respect is i mean i don't think uh, i know many other actors who who will feel they don't require anything else beyond that uh, as far as i'm concerned i've always said apart from being his his son uh, i'm his greatest fan and to have your your idol appreciate or even recognize that you can work that's between us <laughs> uh but it was it was it was it was one of the greatest moments of my life so um i'm just very blessed that i got to do that for him yeah but but abhishek did you did you ever feel of course you know there there, there was also i remember a lot of critical appreciation the film did well but so so you're saying you never felt like like what what amit ji is posting that you know don't sort of it doesn't matter because he didn't get an award for diwar uh, did you ever feel that it didn't get acknowledged enough no 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 please i mean uh, anu um, it released in january 2007 uh, where in you know june 2020 which is a good 13 years later and we're still talking about it yes what more reward do you want than that uh, i mean i still get at least 10 messages a day on my social media about people who have seen guru and they still talk about it uh, and even today's generations see the film uh, so you you've been part you've been lucky to be part of a film which which is still relatable today uh which doesn't feel 13 years old today um what more do you want from that i mean awards kind of pale in comparison to that i've never thought about it the fact that that i get to 
have the honor of being on a show that you're hosting, talking about a milestone film of my career. And that film is Guru. I mean, that is the award in itself, right? I mean, I've always said, how many actors are lucky enough to make that one film that they'll be known by or that defines them, let alone the actors that have made several such films? You're lucky if you manage to get that one film. I'm and very lucky. It, it premiered in Toronto. Uh, yes. there was, it premiered in Toronto. And two days later, uh, your engagement was announced. Yes. <laughs> uh, we had the premiere. We were the first film to premiere um, in Toronto. That I, I remember the premiere was freezing cold, but uh, it was a wonderful evening. And then the next morning, we flew to New York and we had the premiere in New York. And post which I proposed to uh, to Ashwarya in New York. Yeah. So everything about everything about Guru was special. <laughs> and a milestone. And a milestone. No, it really is. Abhishek, this has been so much fun. I could go on and on, but this this has just been lovely. And it's been so nice to revisit such a lovely film with you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And thank you for giving Guru this honor. I just want to say before the end of it, I mean, it's entirely due to money and, and just the genius that he is. And I'm so happy and blessed that not one, but I got to make three films and hopefully in the future, money, please uh, <laughs> give us the opportunity to make many four films. And, and it's, I think Guru was just a film where everybody just came together and we all got very lucky to get the love and attention of the audience, uh, but primarily to, to money and, and uh, to Aishwarya for putting up with me throughout the film and helping me bring Guru to life. So it's entirely due to them. Thank you, Abhishek. This is lovely. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank Take you. care. Hello, I'm Abhishek Bachchan. Thank you very much for watching my movie, Milestone. Do leave a comment below about your favorite scene in Guru. Take care. Thank you for watching.